In this video, we're going to look at finding the area shared by the two circles, r equals 2 and r equals 4 co cosine theta. This looks really simple. Like This looks like it would be very easy to do, and in fact, it is a little bit difficult. In fact, it's kind of deceptively hard. Um, and let me, let me show you what I mean. Uh, my recommendation for whenever there is a... Uh, uh, we're talking about two shapes and, and where they intersect one another or something like that, is to, is to draw a line uh, to those to that intersection point from the origin. Remember, uh, the origin is kind of where all of this is referenced, so I'm going to do that. So, you know, first of all, the, uh, the blue circle is 4 cosine theta, and the red circle is 2, just so you make sure and see that. Um, so I really look at this as being, uh, you know, something I could do in a couple of parts. Uh, first, I look at this and I think that this piece right here um, will really just be the, um, will just be the r equals 2. It'll just be the red circle. Um, integrated from this spot to this spot. The other thing you could do is always just go from zero to here and then you could um, you know just double your answer. So let's first I guess let's figure out where those intersection points are and then we can can maybe take it from there. So 2 uh, equals 4 cosine theta. We're going to set the two equal to each other. Uh, we're going to divide both sides by 4 because remember our uh, bounds are going to be angles so we want to know what theta is. So so we're looking for where cosine is equal to one half. Well, cosine is equal to one half at uh, pi over three. Okay, so this would be pi over three, and I think that the best way to handle this then would be to say this is negative pi over three, like that. Okay, so that's where they're going to intersect each other. So if I were to set this integral up for the red area, you know, just for the part that I've kind of blocked in right here, uh, I would say that that is one half the integral of r squared d theta, and I would say it's from negative pi over 3 to positive pi over 3. And you could really, at this point, um, you know, you could also do 0 to pi over 3 and double it. Sometimes people really like to do that. They like to just say, I'm just going to go from here to here, so then I don't have to worry about the negative angle. And that's a very, very valid way to proceed through this problem. Um, the next thing, this blue piece, I'm going to start, I'm going to find this area. And I'll, I'll explain why I think that's easier here in a minute. So my integral is going to begin at pi over 3, but then I need to think about where is the blue circle, 4 cosine theta, where is that equal to 0? Because I want to know when it gets to the origin. Well, divide both sides by 4, of course, it's you still have 0. So now you're saying, well, cosine is 0 at pi over 2. So for the blue circle, pi over 2 is right there. So if I integrated from the one half here, 4 cosine theta squared. If I integrate it from pi over 3 to pi over 2, of course, I don't have the whole thing. I only have that, uh, this section that I've colored in. So if I wanted the whole thing, I'd have to double it. So I'll just put a 2 in front here. Of course, that would cancel the one half up, but I just wanted to show all my work. And if you added these two pieces together, you would have the total area that's being shared by the two circles. You could also have uh, kind of refigured out, you know, exactly where um, where this uh, intersection point is in the blue circle. But the problem is, it's not negative pi over three um, because negative pi over three, of course, would be would be going around this way if you went from negative pi over 3 to pi over 3. So you have to keep remembering that you're moving counterclockwise, and, and um, it's sometimes helpful to think that it's almost like a, uh, 
like a windshield wiper kind of sweeping through and that uh, helps you see the shape.